Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing to prepare for the smooth transition to the OKEU. A comprehensive strategy aimed at revitalizing the apiary industry has been launched. The La Wars Festival in full bloom as a cultural centerpiece. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing to prepare for the smooth transition from the Victoria Hospital to the new Owen King EU Hospital through a series of discussions. The OKEU is scheduled to open later this year. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. A delegation from the University Hospital of Martinique recently paid a visit to the Owen King EU Hospital to provide feedback and technical expertise on the transition to the Millennium Heights Medical Complex. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Health and Wellness, Felix St. Hill, says he's very pleased with the collaboration with the team from Martinique, given the experience from a recent transition to a new hospital. The support is um, uh, in practically all facets of the transition in, 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 in medical and clinical, you know, organizational, technological. So the team that just arrived in St. Lucia that have been working with us for the past two days, they've been looking at our electrical systems, our water systems, our medical gas systems, you know, our policy with regard to maintenance, even some of our, our organizational issues. Like I mentioned, you know, we probably share quite similar cultural experiences. So the change management process, you know, they've been advising us because the important thing is that Matnik itself just went through a transition in themselves to the University Hospital of Matnik, where they had some enlargement, you know, of their own facilities and their own services. Director of Cooperation at the University Hospital of Martinique, Christian Bourgeois, says it is important that they strengthen the medical cooperation with St. Lucia. Uh, we, uh, we discovered a wonderful and exciting uh, building. This OKEU OK is really a, a very, very interesting building. Um, we, we discovered also a very engaged team. Um, people ready for the change. This visit was very um, good point because uh, we can see that uh, uh, all the comprehensive plan have been prepared, but there are some very specific issues, technical issues to address uh, in order to secure all the plan. So we are we uh, we leave uh, Saint Lucia in uh, the hope that we they will uh, succeed and we can uh, help uh, succeed this challenge. The Department of Health and Wellness wants to assure the general public that transitioning plans for the new hospital are progressing smoothly and that they are committed to providing quality health care services. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. A comprehensive strategy aimed at revitalizing the apiary industry has been launched in order to harvest the benefits of the market demand for honey. With assistance from Compete Caribbean through its cluster development project, Export St. Lucia and the Ministry of Agriculture have initiated a plan to develop and grow the apiary industry. Apiculture, more commonly known as beekeeping, is the maintenance of bee colonies, mostly in man-made hives. The honey produced is harvested and used by various sectors, including food and beverage, cosmetics, and health and wellness. At a recently convened presentation to stakeholders, member of the project development team, Yvonne Agard, appraised attendees of why honey was chosen for the cluster development project. It is one of those products um, that, is, it, that is in great demand in the specialty food market. And so we went about to develop the program, meeting all the conditions of the donor agency. Um, it was accepted. We, were, we had to present our, or in fact defend that project before an international panel of judges and a couple of weeks later we got the go ahead. A beekeeper with Horizon Brothers Honey Producers, John Schalmine, is excited about the project, particularly the implementation of standards for honey producers. It's not just under the bush thing, it calls for a proper knowledge of it where you know that product is going to 
reach the outside market and doing it in the right way alongside with the Bureau of Standard, we know um, it will show success. A critical component of the project is the implementation of a solid governance structure for the industry. The Mill Fleur Honey Producers Cooperative Society Limited has been chosen to undertake this task. Eurelyn Alphonse is the organization's president. We're hoping to to see Milfle as the structure for farmers where they could come and get the input. They want a loan, you could give them that shit stating what they have done for the past year and they could go. So we're using the cooperative to put everything in place, that structure for farmers, the insurance, the loan payment and all of these things. Beekeepers and cooperatives say they are eager to get the ball rolling on the implementation of the cluster development project and look forward to the successes which will be derived from the project. The new academic year officially opened on Monday, 2nd September 2019. However, the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations has informed that a number of schools will reopen on the following dates. The Mikud Secondary School will reopen on Tuesday, 3rd September 2019. The Millet Primary, Mondidor Combined and Viewfort Special Education Center will all reopen on Wednesday, 4th September 2019. The St. Lucia Sports Academy, formerly the Grosley Secondary, will reopen on Monday, 9th September 2019. On Friday, 31st August, St. Lucia Culture came alive with the celebration of the Feast of St. Rose of Lima, commonly referred to as the La Wars Festival. Janelle Norvell reports on the celebration held in the community of Moshi. On the Feast of St. Rose of Lima, scores of individuals, also referred to as Roses, made their way to the Church of St. Rose de Lima in Moshi, all the while chanting songs that praised the Roses and taunted the Magwits, the traditional flower rivals. The procession consisted of members from various communities, each group with its own band. The groups all adorned in their costumes of pinks, reds and whites consisted of a king and queen, prince and princess, doctor, magistrate, policemen, nurses and soldiers. Following the procession, a church service ensued where founder of the Folk Research Center, Monsignor Honorable Dr. Patrick Anthony, enlightened so the congregation. The calendar was changed and St. Rose of Lima was placed on the 23rd. Quali ventua au selelegis on la terre ka celebre feb St. Rose of Lima. Avant tout on la terre, c'était le 3 au. Mais après le deuxième concept Vatican, il a changé et il a dit 23 au. Mais puisqu'il y a cette ici, Nous tenons la tradition de célébrer, même pour la routine comme ça. Il y a une permission, il y a une permission pour nous continuer à célébrer les trois ans. Following the church service, the Roses proceeded to partake in the Confet, where they put on a display of song and dance. Senior Events and Production Officer of the Cultural Development Foundation, CDF, Tyrone Harris, indicated that while more must be done to ensure the continuity of the flower festivals in St. Lucia, the tradition is very much alive and thriving. He noted that the increase in funding provided by the government of St. Lucia has assisted greatly in ensuring that there is proper structure within the groups and there is a component of costume development. A number of workshops have also been held in leadership since when leaders of the groups die, the groups become dormant as other members are not able to take on the leadership role. Harris highlighted that the CDF has been working with the various groups to bring more awareness of the festival to the public. Hence the introduction of the Guan Seance. We have introduced the Guan Seance. The Guan Seance is because before the book, people, the groups used to simply have the seances in the community and the communities would it would just be surrounded um, around the community. If you had to see it, you basically have to leave your own area to go down to the, to the community to take part in it. But what we've done in the Goan Seance is to bring it to a commercial center and usually the commercial centers, Rodney Bay Strip, between the malls, and we're trying to get the um, general public to buy into it. Number one, participate, get involved in, what, in the activities, learn about the, the, the traditions, why they are celebrating, and we are trying to do that for both flower festivals. And no matter what people say, this, our indigenous flower festival, our culture is alive and well and it's not going to die. 
The CDF explained that an increase in funding will assist in growing the festival where even more groups are able to participate. Several groups participated in the festival this year, including the Bellevue, Deriso, Olion, Grand Rivier, Denry, Monrepo, Labry, and Moshi Lawal's groups. For the Government Information Service, I am Janal Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Brian O'Brien is up next. If you're HIV positive or have an STI, having unprotected sex with multiple partners puts them in grave danger. You'll expose every partner and their present and future partners to HIV or another STI. Use a condom every time you have sex. You can live a productive life even if diagnosed with HIV. Remember, early detection is key to your survival. Be responsible, protect yourself and others. Help stop the spread of HIV and other STIs. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome once again to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. With the inauguration of a National Sports Academy, talented sporting young St. Lucians can get a number of opportunities to further their interests both academically and in the sporting arena. Minister responsible for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Dr. Gail Rigobert, outlined three such areas. So the thinking was, can we afford the students very early on that dual path of development that the academic is not compromised, that's not the intention, that you can develop a competency in those core subjects that we need to survive anyway while pursuing that professional sporting path. Mm -hmm. That would do three things for you. Not only would you be able to hone that sporting talent, to harness that sporting talent, uh, two, it would better position you to participate in regional and international competitions with a very good chance of emerging um, victorious. But thirdly, to give you that, that dual path post-secondary to secure scholarship for tertiary education mm -hmm. while pursuing mm -hmm. um, your professional uh, sporting discipline. Minister Rigobert made the comments while a guest on the NTN Live Discussion Call-In Program, In Focus, aired every Thursday. Apart from earning the most disciplined team trophy at the recent Caribbean Charity Football Tournament in Grenada, the awards from the Boys Training Center, BTC, showed appreciation to their hosts by undertaking a clean-up exercise of the area surrounding their accommodation quarters before returning to St. Lucia. Coach Alvin Xavier said the wards wanted to show appreciation for the consideration showed towards them while in Grenada. And we even have something to give them back before we leave. We have told the boys, since the people have been so courteous to us, they give us the, the community center to stay, that um, on the morning of the Sunday before we leave, we're going to take it up on our own to kind of clean up around the area as a way of giving back to them for opening their hearts and their hands to us. The team from the Boys Training Center played impressively during the tournament before being eliminated at the semi-final stage. That's where we leave you for today with your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Performing Arts received its very own stage at this year's edition of the Roots and Soul Festival. In this report, Janelle Norville captures just how important such an avenue can be to the artists. Local talent took center stage at the third installment of the Roots and Soul Festival. The first event, entitled Performance Poetry and Rapso, featured 95% of local performers. Public Relations Officer of the Events Company of St. Lucia, Inc., Miniva Ross, highlighted the importance of ensuring that national performers are provided with a platform to showcase their talent. It's a mandate of ours and it's, it's something that we take very, very seriously. It's very dear to us to always have a very fair represent, 
adaptation of local artists and so you would see that to be a common thread throughout each day we started off again with the first day of the, the roots and soul festival where it was 95 percent st lucian um, we moved into saturday again you saw um skip monday starting the ball rolling um we had as well um on on sunday we had also showing dukes bryce who took the stage we have zamani who is of st lucian parentage so throughout the festival there's a common thread um, we take it again very seriously to always ensure that the festivals also give an opportunity to our local to our national musicians to our national artists giving them a, a, a show a, a showcase giving them a platform to develop their own arts and their skills and their music. Performer Asha Small Small brought raw emotion to the stage as his act spoke to his own personal experiences. He divulged that music has been an outlet for him, providing him with a medium to express himself. Like music has always been a therapeutic thing for me firstly and it's just a blessing that other people, it resonates with them to the point that like they can, you know, feel something from it. So with that, it's just when I'm performing songs or even when I'm working on songs, you know what I mean? Like I'll be in the studio and looking exactly like I was looking on stage, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just the passion when it takes over, is you can't really do anything about it. You just let it run its course, you know? Performer Kamaya Lisette embraced her roots fully with an all St. Lucian crew, from musicians to vocalists and dancers as well. She indicated that she was very excited and grateful, having been given the opportunity to perform in St. Lucia. Kamaya also shared some words of advice to anyone looking to venture into the field of performing arts. Try not to let your inner voice be your biggest critic. That's something that I've struggled with myself. Um, also, use what resources you have. I know we, that's so cliche and we hear it all the time. But when I started, when I first put out Lucian Pride, it was that poem was written for a, a pageant that I did years ago in 2010 and I released it in 2012 because it was just sitting there and I was like what do I do with this I said I grabbed the camera I said to my friends let's go we're going to Oxford Street I'll hold my flag we're just gonna get random people to hold my flag we're putting a video together we're putting it out um, and that's probably been the best thing I've done that that it was fearful the response though was overwhelming it was great in a good way so I'd say to any youth or young person who's trying to you know get into the artistry is to really keep going Try to quieten that voice, that critic inside, and try. If you do not try, you will never ever know what works. Performer Naomi Ngozi Grandison expressed gratitude for the opportunity to showcase her talent. She added that the country is filled with talent and more should be done so as to provide individuals with such a platform. I think it's timely. I think um, uh, it's a great opportunity for us to experience what it really means to be on a large stage, for us to experience ourselves as artists, to, to share what's inside. And we have so much talent in St. Lucia. Like, this is just the tip, literally the pointy tip of the iceberg. St. Lucia is just full of amazing talent, and they've created and they have the videos. So just to have that opportunity, as I did, to have that promotion uh, of your stuff and people are like wow i didn't know you were doing that and other people who knew they're just so happy for you um i appreciate the events company for considering so many homegrown artists um, on every single show um, i'm very grateful the third installment of the saint lucia roots and soul festival was held from the 23rd to the 25th august 2019. for the government information service i am general novel and stay with the ntn nightly up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Enquête. Climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros de l'eau et que la panne de l'eau qui a détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud et qui a tué place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaude qui a aussi changé de manière se pressent qui a quitté de l'un côté et qui a allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit usine de gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre de venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, Kaboulé, gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre, il a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le monde, c'est pour adapter. Nous faisons tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. 
nous tout ça fait que choy. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui n'a pas de l'eau. Bati nous pour abattre des dommages en temps cyclone et gros de l'eau. Construit le canal pour de l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui le canal n'a pas de l'eau. Fait tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger le corps et tout notre cette lycée. Welcome back. We join Prime Minister Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, Département qui n'est pas responsable pour information à gouvernement cette fois-ci, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment télévision nationale pays NTN, car pour cette nouvelle en Creole, pour cette Prime Minister Hutchinson, Premier ministre cette fois-ci. On est Alain Chasney, à ce moment ministre de l'Éducation, on est Dr. Gil Rigobert, fait une visitation récemment pour l'école PIA, qui était du travail qu'a fait à Souyo, en préparation pour ces saison l'école neuf là, qui commençait lundi. Selon le Premier ministre Chasney, malgré ces épouvements là que j'ai fait, l'année brisée plus toujours pour accomplir la réhabilitation, c'est l'école au niveau cette ci Premier ministre Chasney a annoncé que, dernière saison de l'école, le gouvernement dépasser 10 millions de dollars pour venir placer l'école PIA à l'ayant premier degré. Et pour ces saisons-là, il y a encore qu'à dépenser y a lot 10 millions de dollars pour rebâtir en haut de ces quatre écoles au niveau de cette ici. Premier ministre a avoué que, malgré la l'homme, l'agence a l'air gardé qu'il y a une grande quantité, il y a un petit tac de l'eau à l'ayant bombe. Premier ministre Chasse dit que, pour dès l'année qui passe, le gouvernement a dépensé à peu près 1 million de dollars pour adresser des vestes la brisée à l'école secondaire Babono, mais justement, il est loin toujours pour côté de l'école de Le Premier ministre l'a remarqué aussi, il était bien distrait pour apprendre hors de principale école, qui, l'école là, pour qu'on recevait pièces de grande assistance depuis qu'il trouvait bâti en 1982. Le Premier ministre Chasney était bien distrait et dit qu'il n'a pas accepté la pièce de bonnement. Il remarqué que les instituteurs, avec les étudiants, le pays a mérité trois primaires que ça. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré que le gouvernement a continué à embrasser le commitment pour dépenser toutes ces ressources qui sont nécessaires, juste dans toute l'école en cette ci capable de pour un environnement qui a même dégoué dans l'autre institution éducation à la terre pour instruire et apprendre. En parlant de ça, comme vous promet tout, nous avons continué, et puis le ministre de l'Éducation, concernant la situation de l'école cette ci Le ministre de l'Éducation, responsable pour l'Éducation, le docteur Gil Rigobert, a déclaré que l'institution nouveau pour l'éducation sport, qui était connue comme l'école secondaire Gozile, n'a pas offert seulement études dans l'affaire sport. En continuation, discussion et puis nouvelle à Koyol, on a docteur Rigobert placé en l'eau importance à cette institution, comme une saison 9, déjà ouvert pour continuation pour gommer l'école PIA. Selon le Dr. Rigobert, à part des sujets comme anglais, maths, l'histoire, les études sociales et les sciences, il y a un autre sujet qui s'est étudié en train d'apprendre apprendre parce que l'institution, attention, pas qu'à seulement à l'examination si et si. Moi, je voulais dire, c'est ma mère qui a déchimé ce qui a suivi. Yon, nous nou, nou savons, tout petit maman qui l'école, si posé connaître un bagage anglais, mathématiques, sans fin. Ça a créé core competences. Si vous passez à l'école, vous ne pouvez pas connaître ces bagages. Donc, so, nous allons continuer ces sujets. Mais aussi, nous allons faire l'autre sujet en area de sport, qui est physiothérapie qui say interviewing skills, commentating, uh, 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 coaching. So, là où catch les du sport, toutes ces bagages là, toutes ces qualités de travail là qui involvent un sport, sports journalism, yo ça fait ça aussi. So, à part de apprendre à courir plus vite, et bien jouer baton ball, et bien basketball. Là, il y a l'autre bagaille aussi, il y a ça, um, suivre ou, um, un programme. 
On ne va plus que vous annoncez qui, à part de si j'ai l'école, c'est qui a engagé l'activité à l'autre pays. Et le ministre, moi, en même dit temps, a continué à engager l'université et le collège à l'autre pays pour jouer au bébé à si ou en cela, si vous faites bien l'école, vous pouvez ça jouer dans le scholarship. Et ce scholarship-là, c'est pour euh, continuer à suivre des chemins. Vous pouvez ça jouer dans le degré, mais aussi vous pouvez ça une opportunité pour engager un sport professionnel uh, 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 international. Ah ben, comme ça, ça là, quand il continue à suivre notre programme. La police a conseillé les membres publics pour debout immédiatement pièce action pour distruire la cérémonie religieuse. La police a été avec public là qui est coupable par conséquence de plusieurs rapports qui ont fait côté les membres publics qui ont distrué la cérémonie religieuse en pays. La police a fait que le public là comprenne qu'il y a plusieurs lois qui ont gouverné la situation. Par exemple, il y a un individu qui a mal comporté quand il y l'église. Eh bien, n'importe établissement religieux de voyant temps que service qu'a fait. Et quand là aussi, pour un monde mal comporté qu'on a, eh bien, pour dire, eh bien, faire n'importe ça qui est de ça, voyant l'éternement, ni voir l'église, eh bien, de voyant temps, il y a un mort en cimetière pour trouver été oui. Si le loi a trouvé coupable, ou ça a joué une condamnation à un tête de 1 000 dollars, eh bien, en prison pour une année. Si un monde décide pour détruire un lot, Durant le temps, les gens qui ont un établissement qui a participé dans le service religieux, et bien, n'importe l'autre, si un monde décide pour détruire, chagriner, insulter, voulait faire bataille devant le service de la messe, et bien, pièce l'autre, où ça trouve qu'on donne 1 000 dollars, et bien, on l'en est en prison. Si un monde décide pour détruire, il y a un prêtre, et bien, il y a un pasteur, et bien, n'importe officier de l'église, pendant qu'il a conduit le service, et bien, il y a un public. Eh bien, privé, eh bien, n'importe qui qui a assisté à ce service-là, qui est coupable, qui a été trouvé condamné à 1 000 dollars, eh bien, il y a une année en prison. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous invite à vous abonner encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous pouvez vous abonner à la nouvelle en créole. Après ça, je vous invite à vous abonner à la nouvelle. Merci, on Pil Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers. A surface trough will cause some cloudiness and showers over our region during the next 24 hours. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 23 miles per hour or 37 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the eastern Caribbean islands by Wednesday. A broad area of low pressure associated with a tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic has a high chance of developing into a tropical depression during the next 48 hours. This system is expected to remain over the eastern and central tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tides for Castries Harbour was high at 5.59 p.m. and will be low again at 12.12 a.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was low at 1 p.m. and will be high again at 7.06 p.m. The seas slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.